morning ladies and gentlemen today I'd like to welcome you to the API preparation course my name is Keno Thomas and I will be your instructor today today we're going to talk about the T6 aircraft systems or a particular uh, aircraft system in the T6 the system that we're going to discuss in this free tutorial is the flight control system as you may or may not have known, uh, the T-6 aircraft flight control system can be manipulated from the front or the rear cockpit. The front cockpit is typically the student naval, naval aviator's position, and the rear cockpit is typically the instructor pilot's. Well, they mean to do that. Uh -huh. In instructor pilot's position. The flight control system includes primary and secondary controls which may be operated from either cockpit. The manually operated primary flight controls include conventional ailerons, elevator, and rudder. Here's our ailerons, here's our elevator here, and we have our rudder. Secondary flight controls include electrically actuated pitch roll yaw trim systems and a rudder trim aid device. Um, I inserted this slide so you can actually see the face of it really, really well because the landing gear handle in the simulator blocks the visual trim indicator positions. So you can see them better here. And we have the front cockpit and we have the rear cockpit. In addition to that, the combined aileron elevator roll pitch trim switch located in figure 1-26 in, in your flight manuals is located on each control stick grip and a rudder yaw trim switch is located on the PCL which I'll show in a moment. Here we have our aileron elevator or roll pitch trim control. We have our trim intercept here. Here on the power control level or commonly referred to as the PCL we have our uh, rudder or yaw control or trim control and here's the button this is the rocker switch located on the front of the PCL and here is a sim picture but you don't really see it that well so what I've done is in, uh, installed a picture where you can see a very good top view of the power control lever and you can see the trim switch here for rudder or yaw. The control circuits give the rear cockpit priority if the trim selections conflict between the uh, cockpit. So if the student naval aviator uh, kind of does something undesirable by the instructor pilot in the back, the instructor pilot can uh, take uh, primary control or it's prior the control is prioritized to the instructor pilots uh, inputs as opposed to the student naval aviator inputs up front the trim interrupt button is located right of the roll pitch trim switch on the top of the control grip so we have the roll pitch trim switch here and then we have a button here and you can see it here by this uh, image here so that is the trim interrupt switch. Pressing and holding the button interrupts power to all trim actuators and causes the trim aid device to disengage. So all we have to do is press that button and it will disengage. Also a trim disconnect switch placard at trim disconnect as we can see here is also installed on the trim control panel in each aircraft in each cockpit. So it's in the front as well as the rear uh, cockpit or the student naval aviator's cockpit and the instructor pilot's cockpit. Actuating the trim disconnect switches removes power from the trim system and it causes the trim aid device to disengage. In addition to that, on the enunciator panel and the EICAS, in the engine indication and crew alert system, you'll see a display that illuminates whenever the trim disconnect switch is used.
The three axis trim positions are displayed on the triple trim indicator installed on the left console in each cockpit. The trim indicator provides a pictorial indication of the aircraft trim condition. Now, it's not depicted on our simulator, but in the actual aircraft, three green bands, one on each trim axis, provide the takeoff trim setting range for each trim axis. Like I said, it's not depicted in the sim, so instead of one band, you would see three bands in the actual aircraft. And again, the landing gear lever in the simulator is blocking, so I provided a pictorial here for the front cockpit. So what does that mean? That means that when we are getting ready for takeoff, this tells you that the trim settings are in a favor favorable condition for takeoff. All right, so this is something that you would look at prior to takeoff. Um, this will put the aircraft in a, a situation as far as controllability goes to favor a takeoff. So you probably have a slight nose up condition when power is added as opposed to you wouldn't want a nose down position if you were trying to take off. Power for the trim indicator is provided through a circuit breaker, placarded, trim IND, which means trim indicator, this position right here. Uh, you would actually have uh, your PCL, um, your canopy fracture plant panel, uh, here you have your PCL seat adjust system test panel, uh, your canopy fracture, fracture panel, and then you would just come back to the uh, battery circuit panel. And then here you would keep going back until you came to this these set of circuit breakers. And here's the uh, trim indication. All right, and it's located on the uh, generator bus circuit breaker panel uh, in the front and rear cockpits. So let's talk about the aileron systems. The aileron systems are the outboard control surfaces on the wing tips, or closest to the wing tips. You have the flaps on the inside, but we're not going to talk about them right now. The aileron system includes ailerons, the control sticks, push pull rods, and bell cranks. The front and rear control sticks are interconnected by an interconnect tube. So you would have your stick here, which I have here from the simulator, and this is basically the control stick. Um, you have your centerline belt cranks, push-pull rods that we discussed, and um, they're interconnected, the front and rear cockpit. So whatever the student naval aviator stick does, the instructor pilot stick kind of moves as well, well in the same direction. We have aileron trim. Aileron trim is an electrical mechanical actuator installed on the center wing. It's connected to a spring box assembly and a center line bell crank to provide aileron or roll trim by actually moving the ailerons. So when you go to your stick and uh, let's see ailerons will be left to right, pitch will be pushing the button up or down. So if you want to trim those up, you would pull down on this button. If you want to trim nose, nose up will be pushing it down. Nose down will be pushing it upward. Um, as far as aileron trim, you would depress the button left and right. Okay. In addition to that, the aileron trim position is indicated on the triple trim indicator on the trim control panel. So this is here. It's the left side above your landing lights, taxi lights, anti-collision lights, and navigation lights. You also have your uh, instrument lights, um, and you have your trim aid and trim disconnect that we will talk about in a second. And this is located in figure 1-27 in your manual. And all uh, participants or applicants participating in the uh, API prep course get a manual with the course. Here um, we kind of zoomed in. Um, ground adjust adjustable trim tabs are installed at the trailing edge of each aileron. The tab allows maintenance, <clears throat> adjustment of a stick, 
neutral trim position input um, input to the control system by varying the aerodynamic forces acting on the aileron. So the ground crew or uh, maintenance crew they can uh, make slight adjustments if you come back and you say oh the aircraft was flying like left wing down or right wing down you give them that indication of what you experience in flight and the um, ground crew or maintenance personnel can make adjustments the elevator system includes the elevator control sticks push pull rods down springs cable bell cranks and a bob weight we won't go too deep into that in this uh, free tutorial, but we go a little bit more in depth with that. Um, basically, we want you to understand that the control sticks operate the elevator system, and uh, the bob weight is installed on the front control stick, which increases stick forces as G load on the aircraft increases. And it's just to help uh, improve control feel and help prevent overstress in the airframe. So it kind of like balances so that you don't go crazy with the uh, control inputs. Elevator trim is provided by an electromechanical actuator which uh, drives a tab surface installed on the right side of the elevator. So we can't even see that but we can see that the behind the vertical stabilizer uh, the elevator trim tab is positioned over there. Again, um, the aileron and the elevator trim control is on this big button right here. All right. Located on the control stick grip in each cockpit. The elevator tab travels limited to uh, 5.5 inches um, up and 22 um, on the trailing edge down. And these are degrees 5.5 degrees and 22 degrees. So that will be your aileron deflection upward and downward. Power is provided through a circuit breaker placarded AIL and EL trim which is your aileron and elevator trim. So you would know there's a failure if you run your fingers across these circuit breakers and one of them pops out. This is the actual position um, that that circuit breaker is in and this is where the power comes through. So during your pre-flight inspection uh, for pre-takeoff inspection, you could rub your fingers across these. You just gently just rub your fingers across the top, uh, and if they pop out, then there's an issue. And then sometimes the circuit breaker will just pop out on its own without you adding any pressure to it. The rudder system. The rudder system includes rudder, rudder pedals, cables, pulleys, and a bell and crank system with one push-pull rod and two rudder centering springs. So when you press the rudder it re returns to back to a neutral position. Alright, the rudder of the front and the rudders in the front and rear cockpits are interconnected by tie rods. Rudder pedal position adjustment is comp accomplished with a hand crank located on the center console of each cockpit. So you could adjust the rudder pedals. You know, if you felt like they were really, really far away, you could actuate that control and bring the rudder pedals closer to you. Uh, rudder pedal uh, position can be adjusted a total of seven inches from forward to aft. So they'll come back seven inches. Sometimes the pilot's legs might be a little bit shorter. So when you get into the cockpit and do your pre-flight, you can kind of adjust those rudder pedals the way you want them so you could have nice uh, rudder deflection when you depress the rudder pedals um, in flight. Um, the adjustment pedal is not really depicted in the sim but in the flight control manual or in the flight manual you just need to understand that there's that they are there and the instructor pilot will demonstrate to the student naval aviator how to operate these controls in the event that they need to be adjusted. Rudder, the rudder is deflected by movement of the rudder pedals in either cockpit. Rudder travel is limited to 24 degrees left and right. So this rudder um, can move 24 degrees left or 24 degrees right. Rudder trim is provided by an electrical mechanical actuator located on the vertical stabilizer. So this is kind of like 
kind of blurry a little bit, but that is the actuator. And you operate it from the uh, PCL, as we uh, showed you the op the control on the front of the PCL. <clears throat> it drives the anti-servo tab on the surface of the trailing edge of the rudder. So this whole thing is the rudder, and this is the servo, and this is the trim. All right, and that this this trim control is operated on the uh, each PCL in the cockpit. Here uh, you can see the PCL as you would see it from the aircraft and this is the front of the PCL and this is the forward position so <clears throat> it's like we took this picture and we turned it around and pointed it in this direction indicated by forward. So rudder trim is provided by electrical mechanical actuator located on the vertical stabilizer. We repeated that again but the button is basically there. You couldn't see it from where you're sitting but you would feel it or you could lean forward slightly and you could look at it. The tap deflection with the uh, rudder is neutral and it's limited to 9 degrees left to right of the trailing edge of the rudder. So 9 degrees is enough. Rudder trim. The rudder trim is basically uh, indicated on the triple trim indicator here and you could see that in your flight manuals at figure 1-27 of that flight manual. In addition to that we have the trim aid device. Here is the panel mounted switch in the simulator and you can see this in the real aircraft as well as the trim disconnect. The rudder trim aid device assists directional yaw trimming during airspeed and power changes. So as we you know, throw the throttle forward and pull it backwards. Um, there's going to be forces that kind of increase or decrease. And what this trim aid device does is it just kind of makes adjustments. The trim aid device senses engine torque, altitude, airspeed, and the pitch rate or and pitch rate and computes a desired rudder trim tab position. The computer signal is applied to the rudder trim tab actuator which deflects the trim tab to the computer position resulting in lower out of trim forces. So the aircraft kind of helps you out. The trim aid device is selected by magnetically by a magnetically locked switch placard trim aid located on the left console of the front cockpit. In addition to that when we actuate that um, we would see the trim aid device on the uh, in the function what it's doing. Here we have TAD off. A green TAD off advisor illuminates on the EICAS when the system is disengaged. So when we disengage it, you will see TAD off. TAD fail uh, caution illuminates on the EICAS uh, display if the system has failed internally. So we could take it out of service ourselves manually or if there's an internal function where you know the device just fails like in flight or something like that you would see TAD fail on the enunciator panel. In addition to that um, we can we can uh, click this button and it would disrupt the uh, electronic or the electrical power as well so Actuating the trim interrupt button, which is right here, on the control stick grip or the ten trim disconnect on the panel removes power from the rudder tab actuator, including the reference voltage to the tab, causing the tab to disengage. Um, the trim aid switch, moving that to the off position, and the tad off advisor illuminates on the EICAS display. Now, if this sound happens, if the TAD fail caution illuminates on the EICAS display, the TAD system must be reset by setting the trim aid switch to off position and then back to trim aid. So I've included that there so you can see the switch, you move that to the off position and you would see trim aid on the panel. All right. So when engaged, the TAD functions continuously without input from the pilot. So it kind of does its own thing. As you increase and decrease power on the PCL, 
it's gonna you know try to try to reduce the um, forces that are out of whack if you would all right so manual trim yaw trim input is um or manual yaw trim input from the pilot is additive to the trim input that the tad puts into you know use so it's automatically going to be doing its thing but you may want to include more uh trim and so it just kind of gives in and helps you give it extra uh, control balance during different flight uh, maneuvers. The TAD automatically sets trim for the takeoff position in the yaw axis when the trim aid system is switched on after engine start. So when we flip trim aid to the on position, uh, the yaw is automatically set for the takeoff position. So you should not get any nose right, nose left. It should be pretty much straight ahead, unless there's some uh, crosswinds that we need to deal with. Once the takeoff trim is set, the system makes no further trim inputs until the aircraft accelerates to 80 knots indicated. Uh, indicated airspeed where there's no weight on the wheels. So there's a squat switch that says, okay, you're above 80 knots, the squat switches aren't depressed. And um, so, you know, uh, it's really not going to do anything until you get above 80 knots. And when the gear is uh, up into the wheel wells, then, you know, basically that is an indication that there's no weight on the uh, landing gear. Some manual, um, flight manual notes. All right. During phases of flight involving high rates of power, torque, airspeed, or pitch changes, the trim A computer will make changes to the rudder trim tab that the pilot wing may notice as rudder pedal movement. So as you are operating your aircraft in flight, the trim aid um, device may just kind of do some things with the rudder. So these rudder pedals may move on their own and you will indicate that either by feeling it by your feet or if your uh, feet are back off the rudder pedals, you'll actually see the controller, the controls, the rudder controls move if you glance downward. The trim aid system will not completely trim the aircraft in yaw, like all the way. Don't expect it to do it all the work for you. It's just assisting, all right? <clears throat> the gust lock. The gust lock system is provided in the front cockpit to lock the aileron and rudder surfaces in a new neutral position and the elevator in a nose down configuration when the aircraft is parked. Here is a depiction of the rudder gust lock system. Now we have a linkage or latch cable that uh, latches to the rudder cable holding that in position and the stick, the actual flight control stick, which will be pointed up in the front or the center in front of the or in back of the center console and we just push it so that this spring-loaded yoke engages and locks the flight control surface in the position. Now why would we need that? Well when we're parked we don't want our flight control surfaces beating, beating around in the wind. We want them in a locked position so they're stabilized and no possible damage can occur uh, to the aircraft when we have it all tied down and you know you can see that the exhaust is covered and the propeller is we want that basically Still, we don't want that flapping around. All right. Other than when we take all this stuff off to remove before flight tags, and we're about to uh, go with flying. All right. So the gust lock is basically a spring-loaded yoke on the center console. We lift it, so we lift this up, and the control stick is positioned so that the gust lock yoke can engage an adapter on the control stick and the yoke is lowered to lock in the stick, the control stick in a position. So this way on a windy day after the aircraft is parked, you know, your flight control surfaces won't just be beaten around. A flexible cable that we mentioned before is uh, connected to a latch assembly which locks the rudder cable and is attached to the lever. All right, so basically um, it keeps the rudder flight control surface in position because we want all those to stay still. 
the rudder gust lock is disengaged by lifting the yoke. So we lift this up and move the control stick to the side and then back. And then you lower the yoke and then it kind of goes down in a recessed position or stowed position. So th after that we'll have uh, full control of the stick. And one thing we mentioned in the pre-takeoff and uh, pre-flight is flight controls free and correct. We want the flight controls to be able to move to their full position so we can have full controllability of the aircraft. Alright, so after this gust lock is disengaged by lifting the yoke and moving the control stick uh, back to the stowed position, we can move our control stick in the box form or the T form to indicate to the student naval aviator and instructor pilot that this aircraft can or the flight control surfaces of the aircraft can move to their full um, control positions for controllability. And there's a warning in the flight manual, failure to stow, stow the gust lock completely may prevent the flight controls from operating properly. And that is what we don't want. We don't want to be prevented from operating these control surfaces properly. Any attempt to actuate the flight control surfaces or flight controls with the gust lock not properly stowed may result in damage to the flight control assembly. So that is something that you want to be mindful of. You want to make sure that the gust lock is stowed properly. And your instructor pilot will demonstrate how you uh, accomplish that. So to recapture, we talked about primary flight controls, ailerons, elevators, and rudders. We talked about the control attachments and linkages, how the student, navi student naval aviator's cockpit is connected, or the controls are connected to the instructor pilot's controls. We talked about the flight control grip, the trim for the ailerons and elevators, as well as the rudder trim on the PCL, and we talked about the trim and erupt switch on the flight control grip. We talked about the three um, the three um, trim or the three pictorial indicators indicating aileron rudder and um, elevator uh, controls and how we talk about the takeoff positions you need to be within the three green bands in order to be uh, configured for takeoff configuration all right that is located on the left control panel in the front and the rear cockpits so this front is the student navi naval aviator's cockpit. This is the instructor pilot's cockpit. All right. We also talked about the trim aid and the trim disconnect. So the trim disconnect can be accomplished by interrupting the trim here, de-energizing the uh, sorry about that, de-energizing the um, electrical uh, portion or the electrical power to these systems. Or we can do it with the trim disconnect here. So you have two dis trim disconnects. And we talked about the rudder gust lock and why, why is it important. Why it is important to use it when we're parked. We don't want our flight control surfaces bouncing around. So again, I'd like to thank you for this uh, free introduction. Uh, we're not just going to do the flight control system because there are more systems that we need to talk about uh, in the API prep course. So um, this concludes our free introductory lesson for the two API prep with stemwithkino.com. I hope you like this tutorial. If you're not subscribed already, I'd like you to subscribe. And please share on your social media networks. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. This, again, this is Kino Thomas with stemwithkino.com. Uh, and on the website, there's contact information where you can uh, contact me if you are interested in this prep course. Uh, there are going to be other introductory, free introductory courses with other things that you need to know. Knowing before you go is awesome. You know, all this information is compressed in about six weeks, and there is more information that you need to know in addition to aircraft uh, or the flight control system. So we have all that information, and uh, if you would like our help, we're here to help you. This is Kino. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.